many machines are consuming the things that we need for survival, removing the future, removing the past. These shiny machines are removing the future, removing the past. Possibly the coolest thing I have learned with respect to genetics and astrobiology is the RNA world hypothesis. In essence, this hypothesizes that in the beginning, on prebiotic Earth, there was RNA, and that RNA gave rise to proteins, and then RNA and proteins together gave birth to DNA. We think about DNA as this universal messenger and the, the essence of our life, whereas once you start scraping away the surface, you find that RNA may actually be the most, a much more important element than DNA. D DNA is like a library. DNA contains all the information, but it doesn't actually do anything itself. It gets translated into RNA. RNA is the jack of all trades inside the cell. It serves as a messenger from DNA to protein, but it can also be catalytic in its action. What I, what I mean by that is RNA is generally single-stranded, but it has a higher order structure. DNA is always like, I like to think of it like a ladder that's been twisted. RNA is like one of those strings of the ladder, but it can spin around and bind to itself. This conformational change en enables it to catalyze chemical reactions inside the body, and at one time, inside the ocean. The reason we think that RNA was the first thing around there is because of its versatility. Generally, it's quite unstable in a lot of environments. This is, bear in mind, a world in which there are tons of proteins out there that can degrade RNA. In the beginning, this wouldn't have been the case. All the molecules necessary to make RNA existed on prebiotic Earth. We know that. We've done experiments that show that these, uh, these molecules can exist inside petri dishes created inside a lab. Why did it begin with RNA and not with protein or DNA? RNA can serve both the functions of DNA and of proteins. Proteins we think about as catalytic. They cause chemical reactions to happen that generally wouldn't happen because the amount of energy required for these reactions to happen is too high. It's called an activation energy. Proteins can lower that activation energy and cause reactions that are unlikely to happen to happen at a much, much quicker rate. Proteins are made inside ribosomes. Ribosomes themselves aren't actually proteins. They're folded RNA. So we know that if ribosomes make proteins, then the RNA that makes the ribosome must have come before the RNA. Now, what makes DNA? DNA is made by proteins that attach to already existing DNA and allow it to polymerize from single base units we call nucleotides. Before there were proteins, there couldn't have been DNA. There are some cases in which you can get spontaneous catalytic polymerization of nucleotides. In fact, something similar kind of happened with RNA, but you would also need RNA to allow the DNA to do anything useful. Because of this, we think initially there was RNA, then this RNA formed ribosomes. The RNA feeds through the ribosomes, creating proteins, and then that allows the proteins, like reverse transcriptase that we find in HIV, to turn that RNA back into DNA. And that's how we think all of life came about.